Hello, this is Mommy Girl, Free Grace Lady. I'm here again today to share from the Bible with ladies um, who are interested, friends of mine, um, and some ha who have who don't know me. Um, Isaiah twenty nine twenty says, "For the terrible one is brought to naught." And the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Um, the terrible one the, is our enemy, Satan. And God has brought him to naught, to nothing. Um, he's cut off in the lives of believers. Revelation 12:11 says, "And they, that is the believers who are washed in the blood of Jesus, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death." And we overcome the enemy because we are bought with the precious blood of Jesus. And he gives us the victory. Father, we just ask you to give me the words to say uh, what you want me to say and share what you want me to share. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Um. Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also in help, helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now there are other verses that talk about that we go to the Father in Jesus' name. No one can approach the Father confidently unless it's through Jesus. And the subject is praying in the Spirit. I want you to realize that there's the Father who is intently listening, the Son who is our way to the Father. He is also intently listening and interceding for us. And the Holy Spirit, as born-again believers, is within us. And He is helping us to pray. He's helping us to know what to pray for and how to pray. He also makes intercession for us. So you've got the Father listening intently. You've got the Son who is involved by bringing our petitions to the Father as we pray through Him. And he's praying for us. And the Holy Spirit is helping us. He's giving us guidance. He's strengthening us. He's, he's giving us an understanding of what we should pray and how we should pray. And it doesn't matter how many years or how many prayers you've prayed for how many years. We have to realize that we, we cannot pray without depending on God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And that it's a, it's a joint effort, us 
with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's, they're all interacting with, uh, with us and through us in prayer. One thing that's important is that we acknowledge that to the Lord. That Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. And we can do nothing without him. And when we acknowledge that, and when we depend on him, he helps us pray in the Spirit. Psalm 109.4 says, David is saying, For my love they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. I want to share with you that when we pray, not only is God involved in us, with us, and through us, but we are giving ourselves in prayer, to prayer, and to Him, so that He can pray through us. Ephesians 1.15 says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love of unto all the saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, when we first begin to pray, it may seem like we don't we don't know what to say. And what we need to do is not only look to him and depend on him, but we're going to be having the Holy Spirit prompt us. And sometimes in the beginning, it will just be mentioning. Like it says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Sometimes we don't know what somebody is going through. We only have a prompting of the Holy Spirit that we need to pray for a person. And God delights in that if we just even just mention the person. And, you know, we don't even have to know the person's name. I remember when I was a teenager... I would go by people in school, the hallways, and I would see people. And I didn't even know their name. I would just walk by them and I would say, Lord, save her. Lord, save him. Lord, help these people to know you. And I prayed so constantly that at one point, I just felt this flowing goodness, this Holy Spirit manifestation, just flowing out of me to people. And I knew that they didn't know, but I knew that they were being touched by God for some with something I don't know what he was doing with them but I know he was doing something and that was a witness of his spirit and my spirit that even when we just mention someone God is hearing First Corinthians 2.10 says, God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. 
Let me go up here. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what knoweth, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but, but, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So the Holy Spirit knows the things of God. The Holy Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God and the deep things of man. And when we tap into the Holy Spirit by leaning on His prompting and His inspiration, He will begin to give us more than just names. As we're praying, we may mention a person's name. And we may... Um, mention something that that we have no idea what's going on with that person i remember there was one person who was praying for me and my son and the person said i don't know why but for some reason i was praying for your son's hearing and i said oh I said, well, that was God uh, giving you that because at the time, my, uh, my um, son was having hearing problems and he had an ear infection and it was really, he kept getting them over and over again. And more than once, he's almost lost his hearing from different infections in his ears. So, even though the person had no idea what was happening with me or the situation, God gave him a prompting, an inspiration to pray for his hearing. It's amazing. And God will do that with you more and more as you Lean on him, and you'll say, you know, Lord, I pray for Sally Ann, and I pray for her foot, or I pray for her finances, or I pray for her relationships. And we have no idea what's going on, but God knows. And God is, is, is using his gifts that he's given us to edify others and like I said this whole thing when we engage in prayer it's a communion some people say well prayer is talking to God well yeah that's true but when we learn how to understand that God is giving us a prompting, and then we can go uh, stretch ourselves. We, we, we stretch ourselves and we go past our understanding of our own thinking because we may think that someone needs financial help because that's what they told us. But God may be speaking to us that they have an even more um, and more urgent need for whatever it 
would be fear, um, to be able to trust the Lord more, or whatever. So we, when we pray for people, we don't just take our mental understanding of the situation, but we give ourselves unto prayer. We give ourselves over to God as the Holy Spirit is giving us an utterance. He's giving us a prompting. And the more we step out in faith and go forth in these things, the more the Holy Spirit will lead us in prayer. Now, one of the, the ways that we learn God's will, you know, the Bible says we, we pray according to His will. And when we pray according to His will, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. And one of the ways to learn His will is to learn His Word. That's the main way that we know his will. And if we want to know the mind of God, if we want to know the mind of Christ, if we want to know the will of the Father, we need to get into his word. And, and one of the best things to do is to pray the prayers of Paul. Prayer Prayer is us cooperating with God to accomplish God's plan. And, and he wants us, I mean, he could do it without us, but he so delights in our, our fellowship that, that he's made it so that we participate. We participate with him in prayer for the Lord's blessings and will in our lives, the lives of others. And it says here in verse 15, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And he says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And if you can see here, this is helping this Holy Spirit inspired prayer by Paul for the believers is helping to accomplish God's will for them and that they would be built up in Christ and that they would begin to grow. And so I've prayed this prayer, and I've actually mentioned people's names. And I would say, uh, Father, give unto this person, whoever it was, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened that they may know what is the hope of, his, of your calling and what the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. 
These, these things are, are so important for believers that, that we learn these things and we know these things. And that's why this is such a wonderful prayer that we can pray for just about anybody. Because everybody has these needs. We all need these things. And it's God's will for us, <clears throat> for every person to have these things. And when you get used to starting to pray these prayers of Paul for as an intercession for other believers and even for other people, um, you'll begin to get a knack, get, get a understanding of God's will. And, and the whole point is, when we pray, we want to pray for the needs of people. And what people need most of all is what God wants for them. Whether it be salvation, or healing, or deliverance, or provision, or protection, or growth, or understanding, or knowledge, or wisdom, or truth. Whatever they need, it's a, we pray it according to God's will. So once we know what God's will is for people then we can pray even more effectively. 1 Timothy 2, 1 says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will to have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, when we come to God and we pray for the salvation of people, we have to realize that God truly desires people to be saved. He, he wants that more than we do. And we need to pray for every person, every person, and ask the Lord to save them. And trust and believe that those things which we've prayed will come to pass because <clears throat> it's praying according to his will. And when we pray according to God's will, he, he honors that. That's what he wants us to do. And we begin to learn and understand him as a person. When we interact with him, when we pray through Jesus to the Father, with and by the Holy Spirit, interceding through us and with us, and Jesus interceding for us, and the Father listening intently, hanging on our every word, is so precious to him. When we realize this, we will have even more confidence and we will understand him and his personality and his desires and, and what really makes him him. And how good he is. And how merciful he is. And, and the, the overflowing love that he has for us and for all people. And this is going to help us to be more effective in prayer. And it's going to help us to know the will of God and how to pray God's will. And when we pray God's will... He promises to answer us. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, 
but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, this is in the um, chapter talking about spiritual gifts. And it says, Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. So, when when we speak and pray in the Spirit, we're not depending on our understanding. We can pray according to our understanding. God wants us to do that too. Um, we are, we're not like new age. We don't empty our minds and just let whatever we think just flow in our heads. No, our minds are to be active. We are to be meditating on God's word day and night. And meditate means think on it, speak it to yourself. Um, speak it to others, keep it on your mind. And when we are praying in the Spirit, whether we have tongues or not, what we're doing is we're going a little past our understanding to things that we don't know about. And the Holy Spirit is going to prompt us. And he's going to say, Sally Ann. And all of a sudden, Sally Ann's going to be on our minds. And we're going to say, Lord, help Sally Ann. I don't know what she's going through right now, but I just sense that she needs you right now. You know, and the more we we allow the Holy Spirit to to, to do this through us and to help our infirmities and give us what we should pray for as we ought. The more we're praying from our spirit to God's spirit. And, but that doesn't mean that we, we just blank out our minds and just sit there and ohm, you know, no, that's, that's not what this means. What this means is our understanding is not um, what we're depending on at that time to pray for. Now, we can go in and out of that like we have an understanding that um, we should pray for our president. So we pray for our president. We pray for our leaders. But that's according to our understanding that because we know that well, we sh that's what we should do. But once we learn that God will give us a thought, and when we get that thought, we, we say, Okay, Lord, um, Sally Ann needs you right now. And, and we won't even know what it is. But um, it doesn't matter. For us to know. It matters that we're giving ourselves to prayer. That we're giving ourselves to God. That we're cooperating and we're actually in concert. It's a harmony that's going on with God, through God, in us, and us in Him. And that's... Um, very sweet fellowship with him when he uses us like that because um, it's our privilege because he doesn't need us. He wants us to participate because he enjoys us and he enjoys doing his good work through us. So I've had some people also say to me, well, 
if I prayed for everything that came into my mind when I pray, you know, I would be off on all of these different um, distractions. Well, I know that sometimes the enemy tries to stick these things in our minds and distract us from what God wants us to pray. But what I found is, instead of trying to absolutely ignore whatever he's putting into our heads, is, okay, you know, the enemy keeps making me worry about the fact that I've got to get the laundry done. I've got to get the laundry done today. Okay, Lord, I need to get the laundry done today. So I give that to you right now in this situation, and I'm trusting you that it's all going to work out in Jesus' name. And then see what you've done. You've, you've taken what the enemy tried to do to distract you from what God is speaking to you. And you're, you're taking it right to God immediately. And then you trust him to take care of it. And poof, the enemy will stop. Because he'll realize that every idea, everything, every thought I put in this person's head that tr I'm trying to distract them, they're praying for it. No, no good. No good. They keep giving everything to God. They keep trusting him with it. And it's getting, getting harder for me to lie to them, to distract them, to bother them. So the enemy will start to leave you alone when you pray because he'll, he'll, do, he'll try to distract you with other things, like he'll have the phone ring or, you know, something like that. But he won't be interjecting thoughts into your head, you know, carnal thoughts, because if you keep praying and giving it to God, it's, it's making his situation worse. Because then he can't bother you with those things. Because you've, you've said, well, I don't know if I'm going to get all the laundry done today. But I know that God's going to help me through it. And I'm going to work through it. And the laundry is going to get done. And I can't worry about it. And it's in God's hands. And he's going to give me the strength. And then all of a sudden, the enemy is defeated again. So once you know how to cast all your cares on him. For he cares for you. You get more and more victory in prayer. And you, you lean more and more on the Lord. And you learn to trust him with everything. Every little thing. Everything that concerns you, he's concerned with. God has revealed them to us. And I would say, by his word and by his spirit. And as you pray, you will be in communion and fellowship with him. And there will be this glorious um, relationship that you're building. And that he's, he's working in you and through you and with you. And it becomes such a blessed thing. Okay, well, Lord, I just ask you that you would use this to help us to know how to pray in the Spirit and to pray in the Spirit and know how to fellowship with you and know your voice and understand your will, which is your word. So we thank you and praise you for these things and bless everyone that hears this in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Amen.